problems. So lead poisoning has come way down, thank God. But we're learning that even low levels of lead can have an impact. So we just think the level was 40 was safe, then it was 20, then it was 10. And now studies show that even down to one or less, there's impairment of, of IQ and cognitive function. And so the so sort of we've had this sort of staggering effects uh, to our population, but it's still happening in communities of color in disproportionate ways uh, that harms millions of people, that affects their intellectual development, that provides you know these horrible, deadly environments that are 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 robbing communities of color of the ability to succeed in life, of their full intellectual capacity, and and really affecting America as a whole. So. Can you tell us the connection between these environmental toxins and our intelligence and IQ and, and how that how that actually works? Well, of course you're right. And the CDC has um, stipulated that there is no threshold for lead exposure, that any amount of lead exposure is dangerous. Yeah, people say, what's but, the normal blood level of lead or mercury? I'm like, <laughs> zero. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it should be. That should be the normal. <laughs> However, to say that lead has gone down is not actually true. It's gone down over the nation as a whole. Right. But if you look at places where pockets of children of color, yes. it is not That's gone down. what I mean, yeah. That's where people are exposed. I mean, yeah, I knew that's exactly what you want, wanted to convey. So that's the problem. We now have it limited to pockets of um, children who live in these areas. Once again, as I said, people who are trapped in the area, either by, either by economics or by race or by both. Um, race actually tends to be the larger factor here, but economics is a factor as well.